nope, not this time. So I've been behind Sony this entire time with the PlayStation Classic. I'm a huge fan of the PlayStation. It is probably my favorite all-time console. So I've been wanting to promote it. And initially when they made the announcement they were coming out with it, you know, the first thing that kind of stood out was they didn't use the DualShock controllers, which was okay by me. I wasn't a big fan of the DualShock controllers to begin with. I actually didn't get them until very late um, when I had my PlayStation. I remember the first game I ever played with it, um, it was Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, which is a really fun game. When you would drive over, like, the cobblestone parts of the racetrack, the controller would rumble, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. That was the first time I've ever used a DualShock controller. And, you know, the, the sticks were okay. I, I, I'm never, I've never said I was a big fan of the sticks, so that was also an added bonus to have that control using those. But it wasn't a big deal to me. Didn't include the controls that everybody wanted. The games they announced, the initial five games, all really good games. Everybody's expectations raised up. He's like, wow, Final Fantasy VII, one of the greatest games ever made. They're putting it on there. Sony really wants this to succeed. <laughs> then Sony releases the other 15 games for the system. Which again, you know, you got a lot of good games in there. They did add a lot of good games. Overall, I'd say it was better than average. There's a lot of games in there people are going to enjoy playing. I definitely question some of the decisions they made towards the entire game library, but there could have been some licensing or 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 rights issues involved with that that I don't know anything about. They're, they're, they could have wanted to cut down on spending on licensing to meet the $100 price point, which is not an impulse buy. And now I'm kind of wavering that I can even recommend this console anymore for $100. You can do the math, you know, 20 games for about $5 each. Um, I don't know how much digital copies go because I don't really buy digital, but that technically is a good deal. But are all 20 of those games worth the $5? Which is still not one of my main issues with the system. I can enjoy the system with the game lineup. Not a problem with the game lineup. Again, one or two choices were really bad, but for the rest of the games, that's fine. I will still enjoy the system. Recently, Sony held this conference or something like that where they had a bunch of uh, game reviewers or um, or companies like IGN and GameStop and people come to one of their studios somewhere and go hands-on with the system. Great, more news. People are getting to play this thing. They can give their ideas on it. So before I get to the two glaring things that make me really mad about the decisions that Sony's made on this thing. Let's talk about one of the more minor things, the save states. The PlayStation Classic will only allow one save state per game. To me, that's not a big issue. I don't use save states unless I'm recording and I have to cut a video at a certain spot to make that video. That's the only time I use save states. I don't really use them otherwise. But when you have the NES and the SNES Classic providing four, four save states, and even, I believe, the Neo Geo Mini provides four save states. What's the problem with doing that here? Again, not an issue personally, because they also include a virtual memory card for each game, which is a good idea. Each game has its own memory card and the icon, the save icon, is exactly the same it was originally on the PlayStation. So that's really cool. That's a positive. Oh, and the other thing I forgot to mention was there's no um, resolution options like there is with the NES, SNES Classic. Even the Data East Classic had frame options. You know, how you can make it widescreen or 4.3 or add some kind of filter. Nothing. Nothing at all on this thing. No options at all. It is you start the game and you play it. That's what you got. Those are your options. Not even a smoothing effect they used to have on the PS2 and PS3. That's not there. You have no options. You play the game as is. So the first big issue I have with this is the UI. The user interface looks like hot garbage sitting on a street for the past month and a half, which is where I think maybe Sony has been keeping this thing. It is a static plain blue background, no animations on this thing, no menu music. I don't even, I couldn't tell if there were sound effects on the menu either, but it's a static blue picture. A blue background not even a picture a blue background there was one cool thing where the play button was in that rainbow font that they did use 
on the old PlayStation, um, like the menu, when you started the system up with no CD in it, you got the CD player with like the BIOS menu or something. I'm not sure what it is, but it had the same rainbow font. I'm fine with that. That looked cool. It was really small on the screen. It could have been bigger, but not, not concerned with that. That's okay. You want to go with that font? Go with that font. That is a replica of the original PlayStation CD player font. But then you have the games list. They are these flat pictures just flat pictures, not a CD case, not a picture of a CD case, the flat game art on the front of the case. That's it. Doesn't even look like a PlayStation CD, it's just a flat piece of art. And they rotate around the screen when you push left and right, all 20 games, and they stay this flat piece of art as they rotate on the user interface. It is the most slapped together, amateurish looking thing I've ever seen for something that is worth $100 created by Sony. It looks like something I can come up with, and I don't know anything about this stuff. So there's been talk that maybe, you know, it's just a press release looking thing until the actual system comes out. I hope that's the case, because it, it, there's not a lot of reasons you can give someone to buy one of these classic consoles over like a Raspberry Pi or something. So the main menu or the user interface is one of those reasons. If you have a bogus user interface, you're pushing people away from your product and you're giving them more reason to use an emulator on their computer or get a Raspberry Pi. The second thing, which I'm not sure I dislike more than the UI, is that Sony's not even including their own emulator on this thing. They're using the PCSX rearmed emulator. If that sounds familiar to some of you, in the NES and SNES hacking community, that is the emulator you can put on those systems to run PS1 games. So this emulator brings nothing new. At least the NES and the SNES Classic came with their own emulators, the Catchy Catchy or something. And with Super Nintendo, you had Canoe, which is actually a really decent emulator. It plays a lot of games very well. But this is a third party emulator. Sony didn't even create this. It's an open source emulator created by somebody else. And Sony's just using this on their product. So the two main reasons to get one of these classic systems besides nostalgia factor. The nostalgia is still there. I'm still getting this. I'm not canceling my pre-order or anything like that because this is my favorite system. I, would, I want a mini version of it and I'm going to play it. That's all still there. But the two reasons are the menu UI, it, at least in the case of the mini systems, and the emulation. If this was Sony's actual emulator, I would recommend this over other ways to play these games, other emulators like on your that you would use on your PC, but I can't. I can't recommend this over anything else because I don't know why the average person who doesn't have nostalgia for this system to buy it. I have no I don't know how to promote this anymore. I don't know how to tell people, "Yes, this is a great system. You should go out and buy it." Yeah, if you got nostalgia for it, by all means. But other than that, other than growing up with the system, or even if you didn't grow up with the system, I wouldn't recommend this be the way you play PS1 games. So what is Sony bringing to the classic market? I don't know. I hope, th like I said earlier, this is just a preview build of the system, but I don't see how that's possible so close to the release date now. And it really bothers me because I didn't have this feeling towards the NES or SNES Classic when they first came out. I've, I've, I've always been a Sony fan. I've been a Nintendo fan too, but I wasn't hyped. You know, and then once I got the NES Classic, oh, I really liked it. That's what made me get the SNES Classic day one. Sony announces that they're coming out with the Classic. Oh, super excited. Be, more than any of the other systems, even the Neo Geo Mini, which I, I was actually really hyped for. This system I wanted. As soon as they announced it, as soon as I could pre-order it, I got on there and I pre-ordered it. I'm going to get this day one, but I'm much less happy about it now. And like a lot of people, I was doing research online um, to see what everybody else's opinion was on all this. And I came to a channel on YouTube called ReRes2, and it was a couple of guys um, talking about the exactly what I'm talking about now, the UI and stuff like that. And they seem like really cool guys. They seem like they know what they're talking about. And they have experience with the old PlayStation and old games and stuff like that. They're just not talking out their ass about this stuff. They know the games. And I respect and appreciate that a lot. And they had a theory 
that I didn't even think about is that Sony outsourced this to somebody else to create, which could explain the terrible UI because Sony didn't make it. Or possibly the games list, I'm not sure. If this other party had to come up with games that they didn't have licensing for that Sony wasn't helping with, maybe? I don't know. But that would explain that too. Not using the DualShock controllers. Again, that could be a financial choice, but if Sony had given this to another company to handle, it would explain how shoddy and put together this whole system is. So really now, like I said, for the casual, regular consumer, I don't, unless you have nostalgia for this system, I can't recommend it. It's not even out yet and I can't recommend it to you because I don't know why you would get this over something else. This $100, and that's the thing, it's not an impulse buy. $100 is a lot of money. You can't just go and be like, oh yeah, I'll pick this up. No, not with this, not for $100. For a maybe mediocre game lineup. So if you're one of those people that doesn't have nostalgia for it, I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but, you know, eventually I, I'm sure the, the system will be hacked and available to be modded. So when that happens, I'm going to mod the crap out of it.